Hi, honey family. Welcome back. I have an interesting assortment of stories for you tonight, so sit back and enjoy. And if you like what you've heard, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Story 1. The Old Lady My parents bought a nice house on 180 acres. The house itself is not that old. It was just built in the 1950s. It sits atop a large hill surrounded by trees. Just recently, for no apparent reason, we've had a rash of strange happenings. One day, while practicing her piano and becoming quite frustrated with a particular piece, my little sister Mandy heard a voice behind her saying, Come on, Mandy, you can do it. Keep trying. She turned around, startled, to see a frail old woman dressed in all black, sitting in a chair. Mandy screamed and got Mom and Dad, but the old lady was gone. Not a week later, Mandy was taking a shower in Mom's bathroom when she happened to glance in the mirror, only to see the large face of this same woman staring back at her. One of the reasons I believe that she wasn't lying is because she ran screaming out of the bathroom naked into a gathering of my parents' friends. Over Thanksgiving, while saying grace at the dinner table, our china cabinets and everything in our dining room began to shake violently, much to the dismay of our entire family. During Christmas, we thought it would be funny to hypnotize Mandy just for fun. She started counting, then started skipping numbers, and soon was actually in a different state. It wasn't 30 seconds later that she started screaming at the top of her lungs. She's going to kill me! She's got a knife! Oh my god! When Dad finally woke her up out of the trance, she could only remember a lady with red hair chasing her in our house with a knife. The final blow was recently, and by final blow, I mean it finally convinced those non-believers in our family that something was going on. My father has a favorite leather chair that he sits in day in and day out. It was in close proximity to a window, which my mother had opened for some air before a rainstorm. My dad was worried about this chair getting wet, told my mom not to open the window with his chair there or it would be ruined. The next morning, dad was up early for work and noticed that the den had been rearranged so that his chair was no longer by the window. It was instead across the room. Dad left for work, thinking that all the kids had done that the previous night. Mom woke up to the same thing and thought dad had did it. It wasn't until dinner time that we discovered that the room had been completely rearranged down to magazine placement and table leaves and not by human hands. We figured it had been done between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. in the morning. Not a sound was heard even though the kids' rooms are directly below the den and the den floor is a hardwood floor. Our parents used to brush off the happenings as childish imagination, but not anymore. Story 2 a prom night to remember. After my senior prom, my buddies and I dropped off our small town Tennessee dates and headed to another friend's house to unwind. The prom had been tough on us all. We didn't choose the right dates. We were watching MTV on the couch. This was 83 after all. After the severe 2 a.m. boredom set in, one of my friends and I decided to go for a walk on the golf course directly behind the house and see if anyone else was up at that hour. We walked a short distance, really just from one fairway to the next, and looked with interest at the giant old tree next to the creek at the bottom of a hill. It was a dark, clear night, and my buddy Matt and I could make out something under the tree. I asked Matt what it looked like to him, and he agreed with me. It looked like two people, and one of them was digging. I thought it was someone up to no good, and the last thing I wanted to do on prom night was get busted by the cops. So I said we should probably leave. At this point, Matt and I were about 300 yards away from the shadowy figures. We turned around and took about two steps before I turned and looked again. In that one second, the figures had gained about one third of the distance between us and were closing in fast. Matt and I both screamed profanities and hightailed it for the house. I shouted, don't look back, because people in the movies 
that get killed are always the ones who look back. But I forgot to remind him of the little knee-high chain that keeps the golf carts from leaving the cart path. As he sprawled on the damp grass, I jumped blindly, hoping I would miss the near-invisible chain. I made it and helped him up, all without looking back. We made it safely inside. Imagine if you were our third friend, of course. You would have to go see for yourself. So, after a tall glass of water, we weren't into drinking beer yet, we took him outside. After a short briefing, we went to the top of the same hill and let him go down to the scary part. After a few seconds, we heard the same four-letter word that we had uttered, and there he came, hustling it back up the hill. I was a little surprised that he was running so fast. He was a lot less chicken than we were. But there was no way anyone was going to beat me back to the house. In retrospect, we should have done some scientific tests or taken some pictures. But we were genuinely tired and creeped out. Mostly tired, since we had been dancing all night to Rick Springfield tunes. So we went back into the house and crashed. We pull the story out now as a funny icebreaker at boring parties. We never really thought much about it as the years passed. As a closing note, Years later, my parents joined that country club, and I played golf there. I saw the two headstones of the farmer and his wife, who used to own the land a long time ago. They're buried near the sixth tee, about 300 yards from where we saw those shadowy figures. Story 3. The Cloaked Figure It was the late summer or early fall of 1971 and my friend and I were traveling on an old stretch of road that leads to a local township. It was around 9 p.m. We have traveled this road often to just ride and get out the boredom. All we did around those times was hang out in the parking lot of a Burger King. As I stated, we had traveled this road many times without incident. We rode until we decided to turn around and head back to town and the Burger King. Along the road was a cemetery. We have passed that area dozens and dozens of times. On this particular night, I was driving down the road and noticed a figure that seemed to be hitchhiking about a hundred or so yards ahead of us. I said to my friend, look, that guy hitchhiking there at this time of night by a cemetery? My friend just nodded. Upon getting closer to the figure, he appeared to be in a hooded robe and holding an old-time lantern. When we reached the figure, he turned his head towards us and there was no face. It was just all black, the darkest black like a void. After passing the figure, we turned our heads, and there was nothing behind us. We were both speechless. I sped back to the Burger King, and neither of us said a word. When we reached Burger King, I finally asked my friend what he saw, if anything, and he had saw exactly what I saw. We were not drinking. We were not on any drugs at the time of the incident. And to this day, I still get chills when I pass by that area. Story 4. Granny's Prediction It was a wonderful spring morning, about 36 years ago. My grandmother was working in her garden. I was just a teenager at the time, visiting my grandma. As the crisp morning disappeared into a scorching afternoon, my grandmother was still working in her garden. I would go out and check on her, just to see if she needed a drink or lunch. But, she would flatly refuse. I thought it was strange, but she would just continue to say, The Lord will get me through my tasks in hand, and the Lord will send me to the gates of heaven in the great spectacle of light. I had never heard such a thing come from my grandmother's mouth. She wasn't very religious at all. I was astonished and knocked back by the power and conviction at which she said it. I went inside each time she would say it, baffled by the weirdness of her tone. I went inside, and I went to get the fridge to get a cold drink of water. When I opened the refrigerator door, a light, something unbelievable, strange, chilling, and warm at the same time, hit me. I quickly shut the fridge door and ran outside. As I searched for my poor grandmother, I saw a face in the sky look down on me and smile. Tears came to my eyes and ran down my face. As I saw my grandmother laid on the ground, she had passed away. 
She had done something that no one else in my family had done since. She had predicted her own death. I was later told that my grandmother wished for me to be with her that day. I was also told that in my family, past great men and women in my family have been able to tell what, where, and when their torch finally comes to an abrupt end. 